you know, one day I'll film one of these videos and I'll have the script prepared, my skin will be clear, the light box will be on, I'll be able to do this in one take and the editing process will be absolutely seamless. Until then, let's talk about Tough Mudder. Hi guys, so I just wanted to talk today about some of the progress that I've made in training, my relationship with fitness and how my mental health ties into that. Obviously, this is because we're running Tough Mudder for the Young Minds Trust in the UK. They're a mental health charity for children and adolescents and they cover a load of different topics working with parents, professionals that work with children, school children and they just give them those resources to be able to talk about mental health, uh, how to find some of those more sensitive topics around mental health uh, a little bit easier to digest. So that's stuff like self-harm, taking your meds, maybe going into hospital. What I really like about the website is the fact that you know, they've also got a crisis uh, web page basically. So, and that's for adults as well. So if you're a parent and you're looking for your child and your own mental health is in crisis, they've got links to contact the Samaritans and that kind of thing. For those that don't know, uh, mental health crises are where you are at risk of hurting yourself or someone else. So yeah, um, go check them out. There will be a link in the description and uh, our Just Giving page will be there as well if you want to give us a couple of quid. So before I start talking about my relationship to my mental health, I, I think it's important to cover three things. Uh, one, I am not a mental health expert, I am not a PT and I'm certainly not a nutritionist either. Two, I'm going to talk about body confidence and how that reflects on my journey to kind of this fitness. Um, I don't want anyone to take this as body shaming or talking about how you need to be thin to have body confidence or to be in the right mental state. I can only talk from my experiences. And three, this does handle some aspects of uh, mental well-being and mental health. I am largely neurotypical in the sense of I have not experienced uh, any diagnosed mental health issues I can again I can only talk from my own experience and do take what I say with a pinch of salt uh, I'm not going to be an expert on this and uh, yeah we'll see where we can go from there hey we got a guest Mulch come here come on have a job so with that in mind, my journey through health and fitness has been kind of varied. I first kind of really started taking it seriously when I was 16. Um, it wasn't in the sense of visiting the gym or going for a run or doing any kind of like push-ups push or anything like that. But uh, I started cycling to work and my mum uh, joined Weight Watchers. And as a result, uh, all the family joined Weight Watchers uh, because uh, she was on like cooking and that kind of thing. I was kind of chubby up to that point. Um, we were homeless for about 13 weeks. Uh, we were living in temporary accommodation in a BnB and b uh, and fried breakfast every morning. It isn't great for that kind of svelte look, as it were. Fast forward with a lot of different stops and starts as I kind of got uh, disposable income between jobs. Uh, all the way to my first year at university where I joined a gym for the first time. That was an experience. I went for the first time with a housemate called Tim and uh, we did an arm day and uh, I died basically. My arms just were unusable for two days afterwards so that was a real learning experience there. All the way through uni I wasn't particularly active with the exception of maybe going to the gym a couple of times a week. I had a couple of jobs, I did a kitchen job. During my third year I took a year out as working placement for Stoke City Council and that was a desk job. All the time I was drinking and comfort eating because if I'm honest, I wasn't a really nice person to be around. I was a bit toxic and uh, that was kind of my way of coping with it. Um, I was experiencing low moods. I was anxious about money a lot of the time and it just didn't do me any good. It got to a point during my third year where I was, had a picture taken in a nightclub and I just looked at the photo and I didn't feel great about it. 
the idea with my degree was that I was going to go and join the fire service and uh, to do that you need to pass a fitness test and looking at that I kind of didn't get the impression that I was ever going to do it and it was just a real bump to my confidence. Following that it was a bit of a wake up call um, and so I decided that I was going to change it. So I started eating a bit more healthily, I swapped out a lot of different high sugary drinks and uh, I stopped drinking as much and I started being a bit more active. I would do active days of cardio, active days of endurance, weightlifting, that kind of thing, active days of explosive weightlifting and when I was at my heaviest I was 13 stone and then dropped to 12 and then dropped to 11.11 and then at my skinniest about a year ago I was 11.3. I've now put on about a stone so I'm sitting in a comfortable 12 um, and yeah it's just been really good. This is where I want to come back into the mental health aspect. Obviously the first uh, kind of push towards it was losing that weight and just feeling a little bit better in my self image. Obviously there are very dangerous implications of seeing that as your long term goal and just continually on a sense of weight loss after weight loss after weight loss. The idea of how I use fitness for my mental health is that it gives me a goal to achieve. Obviously if you've got no motivation, if you're depressed and you need medication to accomplish managing that depression me telling you to just go for a run isn't going to be very helpful having said that setting yourself goals and keeping yourself motivated and achieving those goals and being able to see how far you've come in terms of your performance ability is what keeps me going nowadays i go to the gym when i'm not training just to keep that kind of motivation to get that sort of rush as you complete a workout that you get that hit of dopamine really quick super awesome love it and so yeah that is my relationship with my fitness in terms of my training plan let's talk that so when I first started I had set days I would do like three or four cardio days that relied heavily on like a five minute warm-up uh, uh, session of high intensity interval training if not that then some form of crossfit workout minus the scoliosis obviously and then i would go on to like skill work that involved calisthenics calisthenics being stuff like pull-ups chin-ups dips muscle-ups toaster bar basically anything that involves using your body weight against itself and that way it you're just developing muscle and tone and it is just awesome. I can't say enough about calisthenics, love it. Plus it means I get to do cool things uh, and hang out with people from my community, which uh, I don't do very often anymore seeing as all my mates moved away and uh, I moved back. Yay. <laughs> In addition to my cardio days, I normally try and do kind of like specialist days. If I'm not at Compound, which is the club that I go to for calisthenics, then I'm doing a heavy lifting day. I'll try and do as many uh, compound movements as possible, so that's deadlifts, uh, clean and press, just as much work with the barbell as I can get my hands on. The next day after that is normally a running day, and that is part of running from work about halfway home. And that way I get to visit a park and do some more pull-ups and sit-ups and chin-ups. That was how I first started training. Four years in, we're still doing very similar stuff. Except nowadays I add in additional stuff in the morning. So I'll do like 100 squats, push-ups, 100 lunges. If I can fit it in, I'll do some box jumps, some double under, skipping rope. And occasionally I'll try and get as much core in as possible with that as well. That normally forms stage one of how I train for a Tough Mudder to get up to like peak physical condition. Stage two is normally a simulation. So in that case, I do a few less cardio intensive days on that front, but I'll also add in a day where I'll do a kilometer on the treadmill and then a couple of sets of calisthenics and then just repeat that cycle until I've reached like six kilometers 
six reps and uh, then I get to go home. I still fit in the occasional cheat day, I still drink and uh, granted I do a lot less of that now and it's just been really really good for my uh, well-being as it were, my mental, mental well-being, mental well-being, um, especially seeing as alcohol is a depressant so be careful of that. And then stage three of my training for Tough Mudder normally falls at the end after the event and that's normally focused on more weightlifting, flexibility, stuff like yoga, just anything I can do to kind of warm down the body afterwards. And then by that time it's normally time for summer camp anyway. So in terms of training we're around about the end of stage one, we've got about a month left to go so that's incredible and I will be moving on to stage two and it's just going to be really fun I think and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into it. I went swimming yesterday, it's been a while since I did that but I am a lifeguard when I'm on camp so I'm kind of getting back into the practice of that, I did a kilometre there, did some calisthenics obviously and uh, yeah just having a load of fun getting back into it and enjoying seeing what my body can do. <laughs> so that's where we're at at the moment. I'm looking forward to doing Tough Mudder. I'm super looking forward to finishing my costume and doing the reveal video. Um, there's a lot that I've got planned for that and I think it's going to be a bit a bit tasty. And of course any money that and any attention that it draws to young minds is okay with me. At the moment we've got about £185 raised. That's incredible. Thank you so much to everyone that's donated so far. We are a little bit off target, but that's fine. We've still got a month and any money we raise is good money. If you'd like to donate, hit the Just Giving link and you can follow the instructions there. Failing that, you can also donate by texting TMYM81 to 770 and also include your uh, donation. And if you're going to do so, please include the pound sign. And yeah, that's it really. Until next time, take care.